Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, hello again. My name is Ray Gary, and I'm the host of this show, and I will uh, be deciding who says what. <laughs> and I know... I know uh, You're just still deciding. <laughs> All right. No, I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to remember your name. This is a oh, show on old people, by the way. <laughs> I'm Rick. Hello. Rick, Rick just said that we uh, talk about the frivolous and the serious. Well, today's show and from a couple of weeks ago until up to the election, we are going to be talking about serious. I mean serious as a heart attack, a heart attack for the entire country. Um, we'll get back to that in just a minute when I will start expressing some of my opinions. But before we do that... Let's uh, follow through with our traditional opening. Have everybody, we go around and have everybody introduce themselves. Hi there, this is Shirley Hyatt. Well, hello there, this is uh, the man that Ray forgot, Rick <laughs> McNamer here, volunteer and board member. And we're excited to have Shirley back in the seat. She's been gone for a well, while. I'm surprised she just said, I'm Shirley Hyatt. She didn't embellish. Oh, she'll that embellish later, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so... <laughs> Hello, all. I'm Robin Renee, and here we go. And here we okay, and another non-embellishment. <laughs> Shirley could have en embellished her, her introduction by saying that we were talking before uh, that I think she is probably the senior person uh, on air or KCIW. Oh, maybe Candace. She's probably about the same as Candace. How, when was that? Do you remember what year exactly? I wasn't here. Oh, you weren't here, no. so you can't remember it then. No, we'll no. have, yeah. Yeah, I was early on um, one of the on-air MCs, <laughs> <laughs> um, bringing my CDs in and chatting away, introducing each song, and I had a, a show called Mostly Bluegrass because I didn't think anybody was doing any bluegrass music on air, kind, kind of a rock and roll society. Anyway, so... I played anything I wanted to, and when I was playing the standards, then the powers that be said, hey, you know, there's a lot of that other music out there. What if, what if you do another show? And so I said, okay. And I called that one Stardust. And those shows are both still on the air, if you care to listen to them. Stardust is the uh, music from the 30s, 40s, early 50s. And, of course, mostly bluegrass is mostly bluegrass with a whole lot of other stuff scattered in between. So... Lots of great stuff. I've yeah, listened to yeah. both and, shows. And Shirley, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And <laughs> that's, that's okay. We discussed this before the show. We're supposed to be better today. But anyway, no, and a great show. I listened to Stardust uh, earlier today. And another radio star we have here, of course, is Mr. Ray Gary oh, with oh, What's oh. Going On and Moondog. All uh, four great shows that are are my favorites. So I have to say one more thing. Shameless you know, Shirley, Shirley was being quite modest about her writing ability. Oh, she has a show also called Shirley Shorts. Was that? The oh, yeah. Where she not, told yeah. Sh short stories that she had written, and for the life of me, I cannot imagine how she has the imagination to come up with some of these ideas. They're excellent stories. Well, thank you, dear, but they're not being aired any longer, and maybe we can reinstitute. Well, that then we got to we gotta, let, let's get some people out in the streets. We'll handle oh. that. We'll get some people out there and then <laughs> uh, signs. We want Shirley's shorts. Oh. And before we forget, uh, talk over again. Sorry. I just <laughs> wanted to get the text number out there. If you're listening, you want to text in comments, questions on what we're talking about, and get angry. 541 661 4098. So text in your. You don't have to be stuff. angry to text in, though. You don't have to be. No. If you are, that's fine. No, well, no, you can you lead the bad with you. You can be thoroughly con uh, complimentary. Oh, we like Which that. is what I would expect. I can't imagine anybody would send anything else but that. Okay. So, enough frivolous stuff. Let's get on to the subject of today. Um, I think we have a man who is running for president, and for some reason there are people who actually think that's a good idea, who is truly mentally ill. Now... I'm not saying that to be, to be funny or anything. If you watch some of the things he says, some of the things he does, he is not all there. He is not 
perhaps too tight. He's never been a, a kind of a neat guy that you'd want to hang out with, but he's he's really gone crazy now. Um, let's see, I made some notes here. Oh, but well, between him and his uh, his vice president, who made this story up, by the way, a total lie. Uh, he's made an awful big deal out of the Haitians, immigrants in Springfield eating the cats and dogs. Well, it turns out that started from one woman who couldn't find her cat for a couple of days. And as I understand, she sent an email to somebody who went on Facebook and, and said, I haven't found, I forget the cat's name, but anyway. And it turned out the cat was in the basement all the time. So she went back on Facebook after that and apologized to implying that the Haitians may have done it. However, our vice presidential candidate knew that it was not true that the Haitians were eating the, the cats and dogs, but he thought it would liven the campaign, so that's what he did. He carried it on. And the crazy one picked it up, too, and put it in the debate. Now, Springfield has a, has a whole bunch of Haitian immigrants that are they're perfectly legally, they had to leave Haiti because of the conditions there. And everybody, all the leaders and most people in Springfield thought they were an asset to the community. They uh, uh, upgraded the economy, did a lot of good things. And now they're getting bomb threats. They're afraid to walk the streets. And, and, and you would think Trump would say, oh, we're sorry. The Haitians are really... No, you wouldn't. Yeah. No, I mean, he should. <laughs> yeah. And I only heard this once. I never heard it again. I searched and searched and searched for it this morning. Uh, John Jr. was talking about these people, how bad they were and everything. And he says, and when you look at their the uh, the IQ level and, and then a couple of other nice things, how on earth is this guy determining an IQ level of a population of 2,000 people? Well, don't forget, Ray. Yeah, that's, that's that's not even a dog whistle, by the way, as to what he was referring to. Yeah, but but don't forget, this is just a page in the book that they're reading from that says, "Beware of letting people who are not white into this country," and so that's just just one town and one situation in which they can point a finger and say, "See." You let these people in, and what do they do? They improve they the community. In, they come in, and they and there's there's so low down and and horrible that they'll just grab your pet off the street for food. That that's just a way of saying you cannot allow anybody to come into this country. They're just that particular town that was targeted because of that particular incident. But it's it's everywhere. If you can stand to listen to one of Trump's speeches. Most of it is about all of the hideous crimes that have been committed by the millions of insane people. They let them out of insane asylums. They let them out of the nightmare situations, and they send them to us so that they can destroy our economy. That's what it's all about. No matter what story you want to tell, the bottom line is they're terrified of the browning of America. There are people coming in who are not white, and they are leeching our communities from their <laughs> whiteness somehow. <laughs> and, um, and and it's all just a terror campaign. And people who get caught up in that and say, yeah, I better, I better look out. You know, this guy came down the street and maybe I better run the other way because, you know, he's not white. So God knows what he would do to me. You know, it's if you can get people afraid enough, then they'll just about do anything. And it's just a terror campaign, no matter, in my opinion, no matter what he says, that's what it's about. Well, just to add a little context for the public, from the day that Trump was inaugurated in 2016 to the day that he left office, it was fact-checked that he told 30,573 lies. Fact-checked. That's 20 lies a day. Out of those lies and the promises that he made, 22 or 23%, he actually did. 22 or 23%, he partially did. Over 50%, nothing ever happened with at all. Since August 11th, at his uh, uh, rally, he's told 162 fact check lies. That's just since August 11th. Just a little bit of data to let everybody know he lies and everything he says. He repeats over and over again as though he believes as truth. 
Well, if you say it often enough, it's been proven that it becomes the truth to people because because they it gets inundated. It's like we were talking earlier about about music. Why do you have a favorite song? You want to hear it again and again and again. It it appeals to you. These lies, these stories, they're they're so shocking and appealing at the same time. It's like you can't turn away from a from a train wreck. You know, you want to see what's going on. People are mesmerized by the idea. Did he really say that? Did he really do that? Did that really happen? And pretty soon he's got their attention. But once and, it's been fact checked, and yeah, people well, know it's it a lie, how do it doesn't matter. people believe him? So, I know it doesn't matter. They're think. indoctrinated. Yeah, when well, we say uh, say it over and over again, that he doesn't have to say it over and over again. He says it once, and everybody or all his MAGA people believe him, and certainly uh, say that the uh, what they call the uh, lame lame lame. Stuff, no, it's just lame. it's just lying. They're making it up. Oh. Well, how they can say that when this guy has, I don't know. I just want to take a little tangent here for just a second, kind of a fun thing. Uh, and we'll get back to the more serious stuff. Trump is always talking about how people can't afford to buy bacon anymore and the prices are so high <laughs> and everybody is poor and you can't uh, can't do anything anymore. So what does he do? He, start, he starts a new thing selling a Trump watch for $100,000. Oh. And it's a limited edition of I don't know how many. And he has number one, and he's keeping it. What's going on over there? I'm sorry, folks. Uh, okay. The text line was ringing. And, uh, that was, I got it done. Was, was that I apologize. Of, was that, that one of those bands? Somebody show? was calling, apparently. Oh, oh was that what, one of those? What, what does bacon have to do with a watch? Uh, what, what I'm saying, he's saying that everybody is so poor, they can't even afford to buy bacon, but they can afford to buy a $100,000 watch. Ah, I see. It yep. doesn't have anything to do. It's just uh, evidently... Well, he doesn't expect the same people to want to buy that watch. It's just, an, it's just another way of, of saying, look at how um, important I am. Look, look, I've got my name on everything that's of any value. If people like a, Rolls, um, like a Rolex watch, then he knows that that's a symbol. You know, that's a symbol of, of wealth and sophistication. So he wants one. With his name on it. I mean, he's like a two-year-old, you know. Oh, give me this. Oh, give me that. Give me this. You know, it's it's uh, it's insanity, <laughs> really. And, and this, like his Bible and his... Uh, oh, dear me. And his <laughs> golden shoes are not... This is not for the campaign. This is for his personal... Have you ever person. seen anybody walking around in those sneakers? Has anyone got any of those sneakers that you've ever seen? Anybody no. say, hey, look, I've, I'm wearing the sneakers? I wear Crocs all the time. That shows you how much I care about <laughs> footwear. No, but well, seriously, he hawks the products. But have you ever seen anybody actually wearing anything but a red hat or a T-shirt or something like that? Bumper stickers, that's about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It make, makes one wonder. Well, have we got something fabulous? Uh, to... Not yet. No? Uh, I'm the operator standing by, <laughs> and I should be fired so far. <laughs> Things are going on, so we're, you're, we're you're working right. on it. You're I right. apologize. <laughs> I wanted to jump back real quick to the lies and the distortion to the dog pet eating, pet eating fiasco. I also think, now I forgot, I'm in bad shape today, I forgot my notes today, um, but I believe the Haitians were invited to Springfield also for lack of some, you know, some labor and the community was wanting them there. That's a little background. They needed I the believe. workforce. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And boy, how old is that story from the Bracero days? I mean, it's, it's you know, kind of the same thing. Um, but the, and the, the lies and distortion again, uh, egregious that uh, the election was stolen still goes on. I, it, how hard is that to believe? And and Giuliani just lost his license to practice law and still another place because of him pushing that. Yeah, I don't know exactly how that worked, but because he continues to right. try to fill up the courts with nonsense like yes. that. One of Trump's most recent lies was the fact that Harris has authorized children to be have operations for transgender mm -hmm. and that she's allowing it in schools yeah. so this has been fact checked it has been put on the radio and in the papers that this is not true and he continues you, to say it you, over yeah. and over and over again because it works for him but i don't see how people can believe that are are do we have that many ignorant people in the country 
Well, it it only takes that element of people who are already not intellectually aware that they have their own thought process at work. So they're looking for somebody else. I will boil it down. This is my this is my theory. If you're always looking for somebody else to be your leader, to be your savior, to be your messiah, to be your president, whatever it is, then you're discounting your own ability to make judgments. So if you think that somebody else already knows better than you do, oh, well, it's like I remember my dad saying many years ago, he said, well, you know, those guys back back in Washington, they know what they're doing. Well, this was like in the 50s. But we make an assumption. We make an assumption that somebody who puts themselves up for a powerful office has some brains and intelligence and some capacity to fill that role. And so we look to them to have knowledge and understanding. But when they don't, which is, you know, we're talking about people who are in it for themselves, for their own power and their own aggrandizement, then we're saying, well, the public won't stop and think about this because they're used to thinking Jesus is going to save them. They're used to thinking the politician knows best. Somebody always knows more than they do. And so they put their own reasoning aside because there's some something in it that benefits them, either intellectually on a small level or deeply emotionally. We're going to get all these ugly, rotten, horrible people out of our world that are raping and killing everybody on the street left and right. You can't even go out your door anymore without being in trouble. That fear factor is more powerful than the ability to stop and say, wait a minute, this is a bunch of crap. You know, why are these people saying these things? It's just simply not true. You can fact check all you want. It's not going to make any difference to the kind of people who wear the red hat and go out there and say, Trump is my savior somehow, you know? Very well said. In addition to the fear, though, there's the anger. Mm -hmm. There, I had no idea how angry so many people in our nation are. Mm -hmm. And he is fostering of that anger he is. Yeah. and firing it up at every You've turn. You've got to have somebody to be mad at. But they're not mad at him. No? You know, I know. It's interesting. Real quick here, uh, we, do, we did get a text, and it says, is this number working for the community <laughs> conversation uh, running now? So, <laughs> yes, and that text number is 541-661-4098. Now, uh, I, we had a little issue with the phone. I hope it's uh, going to be okay. So there's one text that I read it, and it succeeded. So <laughs> that is a text. And also want to uh, chime in here about, we've said this before to anybody out there on the conservative side, and I believe there's somebody listening today, I hope, uh, on that side. Um, we have offered multiple times to a lot of people to come in and share their opinions, too, and that's what we want uh, so far. We've had, uh, well, one taker, Mike Greer uh, from Crescent City, but he's in the uh, in the middle of his campaign, so he can't be here. But uh, next week, I believe we should have one, hopefully two. That's the plan. So just wanted to let everybody know that. I think it's really important to understand why there are people who think that, that he's a better choice than Kamala. Now, we, we really, really can get into the dirt and the grime and all the garbage, but what is it really, seriously, that they think is so bad that they, they are going to go for Trump over Power her? and money. But the people who are voting for him aren't going to receive any more power exactly. or any more money. Exactly. But the so, billionaires are, and they're the voices that follow him, and their promises, everybody's going to make money. Everybody's going to have a job. Everybody's going to be able to succeed. Well, they'll have a job if they can get rid of those people from Haiti. Haiti. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they took my job away. Now, what am I going to do? Well, as of the beginning of September 1st, there were 7,700,000 jobs available across the nation that have not been placed. So where are all of the people that want to work? Well, well it depends on what kind of a job they're talking about, you know? If you're hungry... Yeah. Don't you take a job that you can get to feed your children, uh, your some, family? Sometimes, no. Psychologically, you get angry and you say, no way am I going to take that job because I'm better than that. And then the government so, pays you yeah, whatever they're exactly. going to pay you to be a subsidy. So. And yes. I've heard more than one person say that I get a whole lot more from welfare than I can work on that stupid job. 
And there you go. And that's what makes the Republicans angry. Yeah. Because that's, they that's think that's a hot button issue. Yeah. yeah. They're all out there. Everybody else is getting paid to do nothing. And here I am working my fingers to the bone, you know? Mm-hmm. Which is which has really got just a sliver of truth in it. Well, it does. Uh, yeah, you're right. And But I only think- a sliver. You know, it's yeah. it's like the spotlight is on that because somebody fo- forces the spotlight onto it. Like the silly eating the animals thing. But, the spotlight is right. turned on it. Those people are angry and upset and half crazy over what's going on in their community. And somehow they're paralyzed. They can't. And come J- out in force and say, wait a minute. <laughs> you know? J.D. Vance even came out publicly and said, it wasn't true. I know it wasn't true, but I'm going to say anything that's going to incite the media. He said, I have to, to make up a story. Exactly. Yes, I, I have story. to make up a story. Yeah. So let's vote for him then. I mean, it's, it makes <laughs> sense. Is and everybody course, going to tune in on Tuesday night to uh, oh, see the, the debate, debate between Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that should be interesting. And, you know, we I think we all, I know I do. We all have family and friends that are for Trump. And they're smart people. I love them. Uh, I think they love me still because yeah. I'm not for him. But um, I think it's uh, it's a more a visceral thing. Most of most of these social issues, abortion, that's huge. Um, uh, any kind of welfare to to help the downtrodden, that kind of thing, and then the big divisive religious. Uh, Part that gets in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of these uh, pastors that are backing him and their congregation, I, I, it's hard to believe. Yeah. It really is. And, and they've put him in the Jesus category. Might That might be a little much, but I've seen it and read different things about that, <laughs> and I just don't quite get that. He said the other day that if he loses this election, that the Jews will be responsible for that. The yes, Jews, are 2. 4, 2, the Jews are 2.4. Jews are 2.4 percent of the population. Yeah, how are they going to do that? Well, no, we know they control the banks and the media and all right. that other stuff. But uh, I, I, I guess for us or me on the progressive liberal side, whatever you want to call it, all the crazy stuff that we hear almost every week now. The the latest one now again, forgot my notes, so I'm, this is from memory. Congressman, I think it was it was Moreno. And he was talking about women over 50 uh, don't even, you shouldn't even care about abortions. And, you know, what about your daughters, your granddaughters? Your, you know, your, I, I don't know. It's, if you're over 50, you stop or, caring about anybody else. Or, the and this is a hot one for me because of my experience from years ago, but, you know, the women that uh, have been raped and from any kind of relationship and incestual, whatever. They're, yes, they're a small percentage, but they don't care about those women, it, it seems like to me. They don't. And if you would have seen Trump come out of that tour bus before he was elected saying, I can grab a woman's lower private parts anytime I want because I'm a star, they let you do that. And that was televised before he was elected. And I thought that was a deal breaker. I did too. But it, 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 the first of many, many, many deal breakers. Yeah. It's almost every week. I think I'm watching him say something. Oh, he won't get away with that. No, nobody's going to get. But um, well, uh, his own wife said, "Oh, it's just boy talk. That's just what boys do." And no, you know it's what? Not what boy, you know, he, he, I've heard some locker room talk, right? But I've never. Yeah. But usually. Uh, it, the guy is saying about, oh, yeah, I got that one or whatever. But I never heard a guy say, yeah, I, I uh, went after her like a bitch. And she yeah. kept a... locker room talk is bragging. It's it's not. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and even if it was correct. locker room talk, he's an adult. He's not. He's not an adult. Junior no, high school. Oh, I agree with you, Shirley. He's not an adult. Chronologically, he's an adult. And to be able to talk like that is just. I, and oddly, he 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 is his like a petulant child mm-hmm. a lot, oh, and God. that and that seems to be a plus for him at times. He hates it's like it. when he's been convicted of the thirty, however many thirty four. Uh, thank you. Um, the numbers go up a little bit, so there's an aspect of the society that I think it's. Kind of as simple as he's the one that poked the finger in the 
eye of the government. A lot yeah. of people love that. Sometimes it deserves it. Sometimes it gets a little weird, but not to the extent of a, a, a man like that being in charge of, a, of our country. But see, here we are talking about him. We're talking about him oh, yeah. because yeah. of his, the crazy stuff that he says and does. And why? Why? Because he knows how to do that. And I know I hate to make this analogy, but it, it's true. Hitler did it really, really well. He convinced people that he was there for them, and somehow it was all about them. And if, all you got to do is look at what happened under his control, the, the, the way the boys were treated and the girls were treated, blah, blah, blah. You've got to have an enemy, and you've got to have somebody that looks like they're being downtrodden and unfairly picked on. He is the ultimate victim. Everybody's out to get him. Why? Because he's so fabulous. They want to tear him down. What I you know? I'm sorry. Now, what I think really was the basis of this 20 Project 2025 that started way back in the 60s is the party that's in charge or the Heritage Foundation or whoever right wings with this. They finally found patsy enough. Someone that is a patsy enough to just do for himself what everything that they want him to do so that they can go in and change the program. Because he will do whatever anybody says to him. I like your tie. Okay, I'll sign that. You're a yeah. nice man. Okay, I'll do that. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's patsy enough to pull off whatever plan they are planning. He always talks about how well he gets along with the world leaders like Putin and some of these other people. And... They all know that. All they have to do is, is, is praise him. And look at how uh, the uh, dictator in North Korea made a fool out of him, uh, dragging him over to North Korea and and, yeah. and then showing films of him blowing up the test sites and everything. And the films were of test sites that he hadn't used in years. And all he did with the dictator in North Korea just loves it when world leaders pay attention to him. He's a, he's a, the dictator of a, I guess one of the poorest countries in the world can't even feed his own he people. Lifestyle. Like but that. I'm whatever his name is, and the president of the United States is coming to negotiate with me. Yeah. And all it does is boost him up and make a fool out of the president of the United States because he's not doing anything that, that uh, Trump thinks he negotiated. Right. Uh, we did get another text uh, reading it here. Thank you for texting in, but it says both live stream and over has been cut off. Oh, both live stream and something else has been cut off over the air. This is what the texture says. So, what sorry. is what is live spring? I have no idea. That would be a question for our. But I just want to alert Tom, so I don't know what's going on there. But well, uh, we haven't heard from Tom. Is he been, is he still in there? No, he's there. Oh, okay, <laughs> he's there. He's there. So anyway, and then uh, since. Uh, I chimed in here real quick. We are half, almost halfway through the show. Just want everybody to know we're listening to KCIW LP, 100.7 FM in beautiful Brookings, Oregon. And uh, you can go on the website if uh, on kciw.org. And if you want to have an idea for a show or want to, um, uh, what, what do you want to do? <laughs> Come, oh, and every Wednesday... You can come in and be on the air. We're open the studio from two to three, and uh, and you can take my place here at the microphone on a Sunday oh, afternoon for sure. If you want to, <laughs> what he's talking about the two to three is you can come in and express your opinion on anything. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. We do have a uh, called a soapbox. Where soapbox. Come in and uh, rant, rave. I say sing. Express joy for <laughs> two minutes of airtime. Give guitar or, or violin lessons. If there you go. Two well, so minutes anyway. Yeah, to... I want to change the subject slightly by saying that we could all sit here because we seem to be of one mind. We all agree. Yeah. That that we have two people running for the presidency, and one of them is is seems to have lost his mind completely, but he still has a huge following of people who want him to become the president. What, if anything, can we do to be intelligent about this and not just keep repeating his lies like we hate that he does this and we hate that he does that? We need to be on the positive side of it to say, 
what are we promoting? What is our answer to these questions? What is our solution to Agreed. the number of people that want to come into this country and who have a right to apply to come into the country? We, we've got to do battle with a two-year-old two constantly throwing a tantrum and just putting a sucker in his mouth isn't going to be the answer somehow. Um, I, I think he reveals himself openly all the time to people, but somehow the attention to that needs to be diverted. You can't just say, oh, isn't he crazy? Okay, what's your alternative? What What is Waltz going to say in his um, debate. debate with with Vance? I mean... He's not a, a trained debater. Well, maybe Vance isn't either, but he's going to pull every stunt in the book and maybe reveal himself from covering this very thin anyway. But we, we've got to stop complaining and take legitimate steps forward in a positive way. Otherwise, we're just spinning our wheels. Everybody knows he's crazy. Every, <laughs> his brand of craziness is out there for people to take or reject. What do we offer? But what, what we are offer? doing is something. We are getting out there trying to educate people that this is being done. There are so many people, I can't even begin to tell you, that do not watch the news. They have no idea. Well, then why are they voting for him? Because it's their party. I'm going to tell a, a true story. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say it. Well, pretend it's not true then. Okay. <laughs> My ex-husband, he voted for Trump in the very beginning. He's an immigrant. He's got brown skin, and he voted for Trump. I did not speak to him for nine months. He's the father of my children. <laughs> so I asked him this year, just out of curiosity, and you never talk politics with family, but I made the mistake. Mm. And I said, so, what are you going to do this year? He said, I don't know what's going on, but I'm a Republican. And I said, do you know that if you do that, you're not going to get anything for you, but this will definitely affect your children your grandchildren, their grandchildren, their children, all the way down the line. And he just said, I'm a Republican, so that's what I don't get. Mm -hmm. So now I have another nine months of no talking to him. <laughs> Does he know he's not required to vote Republican, that he can uh, just because he's registered? I would hope so, but obviously not. I well, and, and we a lot of talk has been like this is the, well, like, like Trump says, he exaggerates a lot. I am the, I had the best economy in the world ever. I've been the yeah. best president in history, blah, blah, and all of that stuff. Um, but taking apart, or splitting apart families and friends, I think this is ever since he was elected. I've Absolutely. never seen society, including my own. I've had some fl family. I've had some family issues also and friends. Um, but I was able to smooth over a couple, thank heavens, but we can't really go there. But uh, what is there? So the prime prime example, you say you've had these conversations. Why have they told you that they are going to vote for him? What What is their rationale? Well, I'll tell you, one in particular was a slip up from a dear friend who mistakenly sent me a video on my phone meant for somebody else, and I couldn't believe it, and that caused a huge rift. Uh, took about three months to settle, so that's part of it. And most of my friends and family that are that, on the MAGA side, I'll say, not just conservative. The other but, side. But MAGA, uh, we just avoid it so far. No, but what, what do they say? They don't give you any reasoning for why they well, feel so strongly? Uh, yeah, they do. Um, it's a lot like, for example, after the assassination attempts, um, you know, he, he's their hero now. Now, um, that's not a good example, though. It's back to social issues, too. They think, yeah, he just, that Kamala is going to just put welfare for everybody. Uh, it goes back to what was the thing? Smell up the White House. The White House curry. is going to smell like I mean, curry. really, that, yeah, that kind of race, there's a lot of racism in there. Yeah. And well, homophobia, that's a biggie. <clears throat> um, I know Pete Buttigieg can get tagged with that pretty heavily, and I think the guy's wonderful. Yeah, he's very smart, bright. Smart, and 
and just stuff like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not a history buff, but didn't they leave England to separate church and state and to get away Absolutely. from? Absolutely, yeah. So, big, big part of the reason, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we are regressing. Something has happened to us as a society to go backwards in this. And perhaps when the Constitution was written, it shouldn't, it needs some amendments. I know we've done amendments, but yeah. things need to change. Well, now you're getting into his uh, his territory there. He mm -hmm. said that it, an awful lot of it needs to be re rewritten. One of the things he wants to do is uh, uh, find a way that he can arrest some of the late night comedians for, for talking about him. Oh, he wants Johnny Cash, uh, Johnny, what's his name? John... Johnny Carson to come back. He was That's out there right, yes. ranting. Where is Johnny Carson? Where is Johnny Carson? They need to bring him back. He'll probably be one of the people that votes for Trump. Well, no, he died in 2005. I know he did, but that doesn't mean dead people aren't voting for no, Trump. No, but it, Trump doesn't know he died in 2005. He wants to bring him back. Yeah. There's some stupidity. Yeah. 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 But, but see, again, we're talking about all the things that, that stick in our craw because we know how insane they are. I mean, they're re really ridiculous. But if you if you go back to the idea of we invaded we not you and I but our ancestors invaded this country, there were already people living here. We came in and yes. took over their country and abused them mightily, took their land away from them. And Rick, I know you, you very dear to your heart, you know oh, the whole yeah. idea that um, that we would take the people of the land. This is what England has always done. Oh, tons They're of it. Conquering nation, conquering yes. nation. You go out and you conquer a land and you take over and those people become under your uh, jurisdiction from then on. Okay, so when they when they think about, when the this arm of the MAGA group or whatever, think about how it ought to be, the, the thought process is we're in charge, we make all the rules, we conquered this country, it belongs to us, anybody else coming in doesn't belong here. I mean, it's nonsensical, non-logical, non-historical, all of that stuff, but there's, there's something like they believe somehow that this country was given to the Christians, which, of course, is the farthest thing from the truth, because as you say... The, the people coming here is like, we don't, we don't want the, the king to be the pope and, you know, religion and politics all melded together. But a lot of people, getting back to my earlier comments, are not very self-revelatory. They're not very thoughtful. They want someone else to call the shots. They're looking for somebody else to make sense of the world for them. And if they can feel like they're being abused somehow that somebody else is coming after them, then they've got a righteous indignation that they can use. And if you, if you say this is a white Christian nation and Jesus loves us, then you've got that whole army of, I don't mean to abuse people who have Christianity as their chosen faith, but they can look down on everything else and say, you know, we we are the ones calling the shots. We are the chosen ones. We are the ones. I mean, Trump selling a Bible. Give me a break. You know. Um, so, what is wrong with people that they that they see that somehow there's something missing in most people that they think someone else will provide for them, and it's basic, very basic well to our nature. And so we let somebody else call the shots. It's like women staying in an abusive relationship. Absolutely. And beats them up analogy. time after time after time, and they think, oh, he really doesn't mean it. Oh, I know he really loves me. You know, well, no. <laughs> um, but it is. We're in an abusive relationship. We've got a, a tyrant, and we're going, oh, well, that looks right. You know, no, it doesn't. <laughs> you know? Well, and he's been able to pick out those things that will energize that that mega. Oh, exactly. Human. So when people say he's stupid, no, he's not. He's stupid like no, a fox, no. you know? No, I think he is, has some mental problems. I don't think he's stupid either, but uh, you know, I can't think of the terms. On the, he's not stupid, but he's not very bright either. <laughs> um, we, uh, his, his latest rant, I don't know how many people have seen it, and you talk about people not reading the news or seeing the news. I was amazed that people I spoke to who hadn't seen this 
where he talked about how he is going to be protecting women. The women in this country are very poor. They're, they're, they're very afraid. They're depressed. They're upset. They're da, 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 and all these different things. And he is going to become their protector. The they won't be afraid to walk on the streets anymore. Yeah. And you were going to say something? Well, the assault charges that he has against him. Right. Uh, and and they actually, won't have to... They won't, they won't have to worry about abortions or anything well, like that anymore. Right. No, his <laughs> record his, on for women is <laughs> atrocious. He also really. says that that if he wins the election, you won't have to vote anymore, because right. in the four years he's going to fix everything. Yeah, you won't need another layer. Can you believe it? Right. <laughs> well, he intends, he intends to become like the people he admires, a dictator, a dictator. Well, yeah, that's what he said. I'll yeah. be a dictator the well, first yeah, day, yeah. but nobody's listening. Well, they, they are, but it's hard to believe it from people like us who go, yeah, that's, that sounds wrong. You know, it is wrong, but there are a lot of people who hear it and it doesn't connect with them what that really means, what that really means. And getting back to the, to the idea of him being a protector, for God's sake, you know, if you, if you look at, again, the biblical, the Islamic, the, any of the other religions, where the woman is put in her place. I watched a news program this morning where I think it was the president of Iran who was being interviewed, and he said that, that women needed to just remember that, they, that there were rules, and you do not go out in public without being fully dressed in the garb, which won't reveal yourself to the world, you know, hide, in other words, don't exist that those are rules, that they've been set in place, and that they work, and that, that, that women just need to remember that. What they do in their own home is different, but if they're going to be part of society and go out and walk on the street, they had better mind their business and do the correct thing. Women have been the target of tyrants forever. You know, yeah. I mean, this is, this is just being blown up into um, to where we can all see it so plainly. You know, good grief. What's this abortion thing about? Control. That's all. It's just yeah. about control. Yeah. They don't care about the baby. On the they flip can... side of it, he says he's going to make the government or health care pay for IVF. So because, is that not contradictory? Because well, of course we it need is. those beautiful babies. We need to have the babies. We need more babies. Uh, practically a quote from Hitler. Hitler set up camps where people could mate to, to, to have more people. Um. Real quick, we did get another uh, text here, kind of a suggest suggestion for another show. Why do uh, question? Why do so many people not vote? How to promote improvement? Which I'm thinking, how to promote people to vote? Uh, I, what else can we do? Especially when you have a state like here, where you simply go down to the mailbox and drop you. I would understand if I lived in Florida, where people stand in line in the weather for three and four hours to vote. I hate well, to say it, but I'm not so sure that I would go do that. Well, again, no, uh, and that there's another issue that the MAGA people seem to like to pound, that voting by mail is fraudulent. But Trump votes my mail. Well, and, it, <laughs> Hello. and it's not <laughs> perfect. I think, but, I think people think that you go get a ballot uh, at the convenience store like you pick up a pull tab or something and drop it. Well, no, no, no. There's a lot of safeguards. In right. And in that. Uh, it goes the MAGA uh, Republican. I, I think they're. Are they really I'd like to separate Republican and MAGA because I no, don't no, think I know. they're it, all but, MAGA. Oh, well, I think there's a few percentage of the Republicans that aren't, but I, who knows what the who percentage knows? is. I, and I don't know. Um, but ever since uh, Kamala came on the scene and then it, uh, well, no, it goes before that. They've been trying every which way little uh, things to try to make voting harder for people. The, the Georgia hand count has come out now. Uh, I don't know if that's going through. Places where you can't give people water or food on the law of that. Then there was it. Now, I'm not quite a scholar on the electoral college. To me, it should be gone. But it had something to do. They tried something in Nebraska recently with uh, trying to change the rules so to, to give it would give 
Trump won more electoral vote, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, and they're always trying to do that. They're trying to cast a spurt. Manipulate everything. Yeah. That it was fraudulent. And you know what? Okay, sure, there must be some fraud somewhere in elections, but it's so minute and everything's been proven that it was a fair election. And that's another one that galls me when I hear them interview these people recently. If, uh, you know, if Kamala wins, would you certify the election? It's never just, well, sure, yes, no. It's, oh, well. If it's fair. If it's fair. Yeah. In other words, no. The, the, a lot of them wouldn't do it. So even if Kamala does win, and yeah, I'm hoping that's the way it's going to be, it might be a long slog again getting through the. You know, every now and then I wonder, are, even the hardcore MAGA people are going to possibly think, do we want to go through all this again? It's, aren't we kind of bored or tired of doing it the first time, dragging all these well, court I, actions and different things? Well, if they get what they want, which is to have ultimate power to do whatever it is that they want, that group of people, those MAGA people or the um, Project 2025 people, they will have the power like they've never had before to do whatever the heck they want. And if they want to take a busload of people and uh, drive them into the ocean and say, you're on your own, then they'll do it. But they're, you know? they're probably not going to overturn overturn the election. And you would think maybe some of them will realize that and it won't be as bad. I don't know. If well, uh, Kamala wins big, I think that'll the MAGA Trump thing will die down. Oh, I don't know. Well, I mean, he, he lost hopeful. big in the last one. That, uh, well... Not electorally, electorally. No, okay, yeah. That's the because they they discount the uh, the the popular vote. Thank you. Couldn't think of it. And lost by seven million. Right, right. So, and we got another text here. Uh, near the beginning of his term as president, tr uh, near the beginning of his term as president, Trump said on multiple occasions that he'd like to be president for life. Yes, yes he did. Why does nobody bring this up? Well, yeah. thank you. We're, I guess we'll yeah, bring it up did, now. Cause he did say that. Yeah. Well, he did say there'll never be another election right. again. He, he said has a lot said of it. Crazy yeah. stuff. Thank you, Texter, for <laughs> for that. By the way, um, yeah. Well, it still comes back in in my mind to saying we know all of this. We know all of this. What do we do about it? To to try to have intelligent conversations with people. I want to know why people are so eager to believe the things that he says. And what's in it for them? You know, what do they think they're going to get? That they're that their next door neighbor who's been there for twenty years, but was, you know, came in from any country in the world, any country, whatever it happened to be, uh, that that they should all be sent away. How, how long do you have to live here before you belong? You, you know, can come, you can come here from Norway. Oh, well, that's true. Trump okay. wants people from Norway, and he doesn't understand why they don't want to come here. Yeah. Just, and on but, their side, I hear the arguments for three things a lot, crime, the economy, the border. Yeah. And the border... Well, that's the big one. That's well, the big and one. And yes, yeah. it's a mess. It's been a mess. I, I, I think... It, well, anyway, let me just say this. There was a chance to do something about it a few months ago. Yes. Wouldn't have been perfect, but it had bipartisan... Support and the support of the of the border patrol and Trump killed it and Trump killed it. But he why? Because, because it was going to be politically bad for him and all the these people, the GOP, a lot of the congressmen and senators, they're they're smart people too. But the king had spoken. All right. You know, now, if, you re if, if you remember during the during the uh, State of the Union, uh, the president brought that up, and he's and he. Talked about it being a part of bipartisan agreement and this and that, and Trump killed it. And one of the co-authors of the bill was sitting there, and the camera went on him, and he was shaking his head. Yes, that's true. Yes, there yes, have been Republicans to say that, that that is true. They killed it because of Trump. Yeah. And who, was that Mike Johnson himself? No. I, don't, I don't know. No. No, it wasn't Johnson. No. no. Okay. Sorry. One of, one of the things that, that really kind of irks me, one, one of the things they gave him credit for is, how well he handled COVID. Now, he knew he knew before how any, well he handled COVID. He knew before anybody knew or the general public that COVID was just what it was—an extremely dangerous disease. 
It was transported through the air. Uh, it was very commu communicable, and many people will die. He knew that. He's on tape saying that. Uh, that I forget True. the guy that interviewed him, and he didn't want to do anything because he didn't want to cause a panic. I'm not sure what that panic would have looked like, but he sure caused a hell of a panic by not doing anything True. where a million people died. He was saying, not, not long after he found that out, he was on television saying, this is nothing. Don't worry. It's nothing it'll worse than a bad cold. And, and, and by spring, it'll be gone like a miracle. And maybe uh, we can drink bleach. <laughs> right. Or that's the other thing. I think the guy is, he's standing up there in front of his, uh, oh, 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 I can't remember the woman's. Oh, the doctor? The doctor. The doc yeah. I can't remember. And and he's uh, he's uh, counting off some of the things he's heard that, that uh, disinfectant will knock it out in a minute and light it can't stand daylight and uh, so couldn't we get some disinfectants into the body or some light it remember it well uh, uh, I, I will never forgive that woman I don't care what the hell the job face, was yeah. for <laughs> sitting there and not saying a damn thing Should've, but yeah is he so stupid that he thinks that he can stand there at the podium and come up with a, a cure that the whole world is trying to come up with oh why don't we just Complete. No, but but the thing is, this the, this is the question ultimately. What is it that he has that is so powerful that those people will sit there and shut up, and they don't say, "Sir," the way he, "Sir," um, I think you're wrong about that. No, we could not do that. That is not a good. Nobody talks back to the guy. What is it? Who are the people around him, and what is it? The power that he personally yields that so many people are willing to shut their mouths when they know darn well that everybody knows darn well that what he's doing is dead wrong and it's just so bad for everybody and that he's you know off he has she, always she, said she, if you don't agree with me you're going to get prosecuted she, and they're afraid of that because it has been but done. if they don't vote him in he doesn't have any power so That's exactly why are right. they falling in line with him do they have a certain kind of power that they're automatically going to receive. What kind of money do, do these people get? What's really going on Good question. to promote them to say, yeah, I'm on his team. Yeah, that sounds right. That doctor knew that she would be probably fired right there on the stage if she got up and said anything. But so what? It's just a job. It's just a job. We're talking about thousands of people dying, and she's worried about her job. She's a physician. She'll get a job someplace. Well, that's my point. Why? Why are yeah. these people so terrified of well, him? Uh, here's a reason, maybe, uh, a little bit. How about the way he villainized, that's the right word? Yes. Um, <laughs> Dr. Fauci. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. guy has turned into uh, a target for a shooting range for some of these people. Yes. Unbelievable. Now, yeah, mistakes were made. This was kind of an unprecedented uh, deal that happened at the time, and everybody was a little beside themselves, but I thought this guy did his has done his best for decades and turned into uh, well, they need a, a monster goat. for some people. Somebody's got to be the scapegoat. Well, there you go. But yeah. and, and I don't know, Shirley. Back to what you said. What is his? He does have this is scary. I think he does have that weird power. None of us would buy it, but there's a lot of people that buy it that might be afraid of him or just believe whatever he says. Even though think, they know it's a lie, they believe it. Don't you think that he's given people who are angry and upset about something, doesn't matter what it is, uh, the okay to say, hey, if you're pissed off, go ahead. Oh, you bet. You know, if you're, if you're mad and, and somebody does you a bad turn, go get them, that's, you know? That's part of it. And it's then those faith. people are like, yeah. That's right. That's what the Proud Boys are for. Yeah. Oh boy. So... You know, why, then we can come back and say, why are there so many miserable, unhappy people? And again, it's a very simplistic solution on my part to say it. But they think somebody else always knows better than they do. Somebody else is stronger. Someone else is smarter. Somebody else has the answer. And, and we're not teaching people to trust their own reasoning powers, or or if you do think differently, you get squashed immediately, or you've got to be on this team or that term team. So, you know, we do it to ourselves in a sense, you know. Or they think, oh, well, it's just one vote. It's not going to change anything. I think a lot of people have that mentality. 
oh, one sure. person, it's not going to make a difference. I'm not going to go vote. I'm busy that day. Right. right. Hence my distaste for the electoral college still. I always <laughs> yes. throw that in. I just, I, I, I can't believe we still do that. I really can't. Well, it's never been put on the ballot, has it? Well, I hope. I think it, it, takes, uh, it, takes, it takes a lot. You've got to change the Constitution. It takes uh, an amendment which, to Congress, but isn't it to the Constitution, yeah. and that comes from Congress. Yeah, yeah, good luck but, with that. But wasn't that an amendment in the first place? To oh. have the Electoral College, yeah. but that was how that many was, hundreds of years ago? Yeah, it was in the 1700s, I think. Life has or changed. Early 1800s. The I world has changed. Okay. Oh, Life has yes, changed. Has no kidding. Changed. You know, we don't need the same reasoning behind yeah. the electoral vote as they did back then. No, I don't believe so. So things have changed. It should be changed. Yeah. Boy, we are running short of time now. We got a less than, well, four minutes left. Oh, so. my goodness. How will so we that, ever fill it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, and again, I want to say, of course, anybody out there listening wants to come on in. We are, we're, we're looking for uh, other people to ha sit in our seats, other than Ray's, of course, but uh, offering your mm -hmm. views and opinions. <laughs> and we really do want opposing views if we can, and I'm still hoping for next Sunday that we'll have that. One well, and, and I think when we say opposing views, I think we, I would like personally to know more about the people who are not thinking in the same way that I do well, uh, and to try too. to understand that. Try, yeah, just just ask one. They'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but see, it comes down to villainizing one person or the other, and that's not really the answer. But evidently it is at this point because that's what it's come down to. Well, we have this total opposite, so you have to get on one team or not the other. It's a lot like the Dodgers and the Giants where there's... Oh, here no we real reason, but now uh, <laughs> I mean, we have her uh, ideas on things and his idea on things, and I don't think she has said, maybe she has, uh, and I haven't heard it, that blood will run in the streets if she doesn't get elected. Well, she said, no. is that that? No, no, no. I don't think so. Gosh. <laughs> well, she just... did say, come to my house and I'll shoot you. <laughs> you go, girl. She has that. <laughs> I know. I thought, okay. Did is... that? Is that true? Yes. She you didn't hear that. her say that? They were yeah. asking her about guns, and she said, well, if somebody comes to my house, they're going to get shot. Oh. Yeah, so that she might be the me. case. But, hey, uh, I have no problem with that. No, no, no. I'm not no. a fan of guns by any means, but... I know, but there I was are... a cop for 20 years, and I know right. that story, yeah. Right. I think the, uh, the reasoning behind her statement for that is to say, I'm not trying to take away your gun rights. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly why she said that, and that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. But he keeps saying it. He'll say it and say it and say it. Well, of course, because that's what he does. Yeah. Surprise. Yep. Well, <laughs> and your son will go to school and come home a girl. The, <laughs> I don't no, think gotcha. that, that guns should. I think guns are fine if you are a responsible gun owner. But I don't think it's necessary to give a young 14-year-old an AR-style rifle or machine gun or whatever it is right. for any reason. Right. I don't think you need an AR at the age of 14. But at any age, have a gun that... that that sh fires over 100 rounds a minute. Uh, we just keep thinking up bigger and better and, ways and, and, to kill each other, don't we? And this is the Supreme Court said, oh, that's not a machine gun because it doesn't have this click or that click. Or yeah, and not being a gun person at some of those arguments. That, but I'm, I'm with you, Robin. I may, probably everybody here, yeah. I, I, nobody really thinks guns, all guns should be banned. I've heard that they're going to take people's guns and melt them down. And, oh, come on, man. Nobody's make a shoes that. out of them. Make shoes out of them. I think that'd be good. <laughs> Gold shell? <laughs> Plowshares. Well, we Plow are shares. just shares. about out of time, Mr. Yep. Ray. Uh, for uh, So, again, for you folks listening, hopefully next week we'll have, uh, well, we will have another. We're going to be discussing election until the election's over with. Yep. And if you want to get your two cents and get it in. You bet. Nice to see everybody again. Tune yeah. in again. Have Shirley back and Robin and... Just want to let everybody know again what you're listening to, KCIWLP 100.7 FM in beautiful Brookings, Oregon. Signing off until next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Adios.